Hey guys, so welcome to a big product reveal. Been working on it for quite a few months since around April this year. Um, obviously with COVID and everything, there's been a few delays, but at long last, I can finally reveal um, a whole range of really exciting product. Um, so in the sort of view here, you can see that there's a few little clues as to where we headed. Um, at the bottom, you'll see there's obviously our finished product, which are some flies. Uh, these amazing flies have been tied by the guys at Flies Inc. Um, and if you use sort of the right tools and the right materials, you can also tie something really, really cool like their flies. So there's a couple of large flies um, sort of scattered around here. And then we've got a few reels as well because everybody likes to see a really pretty reel. Um, you'll also notice a few tongues and beads and that sort of stuff. These are just little clues and at the back you may notice the boxes. Uh, the boxes are probably the biggest giveaway. No, they're not fly boxes, but they could be used as fly boxes. So uh, let me take you through the new range of stuff that um, I think you're going to all really enjoy using. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, please let me know. Um, I will be uploading everything over the weekend and probably into next week because there's a lot of stuff to go through. And I like to do all the photography and I like to check each individual product as I go through it. So it is a little bit tedious, but at least when it arrives in your hands, you know that you're getting something that's actually sort of uh, been looked at and sort of tested. Okay, so let's start it off with the big boy, I think. Okay, so let me move these boxes out the way here. Let me come to those now. Okay, so over here we have three pretty big boxes. And what is inside them? You may already sort of see something there, um, but let me go ahead and open it up. Alrighty, so this is our new fly tying toolkit. This is the complete one. It comes with pretty much everything you can possibly imagine that you need to tie really awesome flies, and it's all really good quality product. Um, we get it made in um, sort of the best factories that we can. Um, this particular range of product is not from the East. It actually comes from um, some other guys. Um, so the guys that manufacture for uh, your sort of top European brands and your top American brands, they sort of manufacture for us as well. So you may see some similarities. It's not a copy. It's been made in the same place. Um, so here we go. Let's have a look. Okay, so starting at the bottom over here, let's start over there. Let me see if I can get in the frame nicely for you guys. Okay, so obviously you've got your bobbin holder. Uh, this isn't plastic. This is actually cast aluminium. And then you've got your stainless tube, so there's no more worrying if you drop it or anything like that. Um, it's not like sort of some of the ceramic ones in that where they crack really easily. Okie dokie. The brass fittings as well. So the big kit like this. So the ultimate kit, you get the fancier bobbin. Uh, you've got your whip finisher over here. So they're pretty cool as well. Uh, they've all got the little real fly fishing branding on them as well. Let's see if I can get this camera to focus. There we go. So it's all been laser engraved in that directly onto the aluminium. Um, it comes in the box as you see it with the cutout foam. Um, let's have a look at what else we got. Okay, we've got your standard straight point scissors. They're pretty cool come like that okay cool then what we've got over here let me see if i can get this tool out of here okay obviously you've got your probably the most overlooked little tool but ah oh, there we go the little finger hole sorry you've got your bodkin so these little guys are great for separating beads separating feathers putting a little bit of head cement anything like that um, your bodkin is a pretty much essential tool i would say um, okay then what else have we got here Maybe something that a lot of people don't use um, is your sort of long tweezers like this. So what I sort of found recently is traditionally where I used a bodkin to sort of pull out the dubbing on your PTNs and that to sort of give it that nice little like buggy look. Um, I actually take tweezers now and I grab the fibers and I pull them. Um, it just gives you a little bit more control uh, where you sort of like picking the actual dubbing apart with uh, your bodkin that can sometimes almost break the fibers, you know, whereas this you almost sort of teasing them out let's call it um, so these guys are really cool they're nice and long you can also grab bees with them can sort of place fibers all that sort of stuff and they all stainless steel um, that have sort of been coated with this really cool coloring 
Um, so it's nice low key black on the point so that you don't get any reflection from the light when you're tying. Um, so I'm just running through this quickly because there's quite a lot to go through. <laughs> um, obviously over here you've got your little hair stacker. These are really cool. Um, so what they do is you obviously pop your hair in the top there, give it a little bang like that on the table and you flip it open like that. And then you grab the hair out and it's all aligned that you can put it onto your sort of favorite patterns. Um, one of the key ones is generally like your LK Caddis or something like that. Um, so those are really cool. And got a little RF Real Fly Fishing branding on there as well. Um, okay, obviously you've got your hackle ply over here. So these guys are really cool. Nice and sturdy, they're not going to let go of anything. Um, on some of our new vices, we do have a parachute or um, sort of wing holder that's going to be included as an extra for the vices. And you can actually hook this hackle plier onto that to essentially grab your posts or parachutes or anything like that, you know. Um, it makes it easy to tie around. So there's this little guy as well. Let's have a look here. Okay, we've got this tool over here. So this is a little bit different to what most people will recognize when we talk about a dubbing twister and um, a sort of dubbing loop as well. So this is a two-in-one essentially. Um, so you've got the hoop like this. Obviously when you have it like this, it allows you to hold it. That allows you to spin it. Okay. Um, but you get different little attachments. So this is the little hook, which is essentially your dubbing loop. Okay. And then over here is the other tool. Let's just see if we can pop it out there. So that actually fits in there like that there we go okay and that's got your little crocodile clip or as they call it in america the gator clip okay so there that gives you quite a versatile little tool that can do a bit of both you know you've got your dubbing loop over there and then you've got your dubbing clip so you can play around with a few different options there okie dokie so let's pop that back in there Pop that back in there. Okay, and then lastly, we have this little guy over here. I don't know why I keep trying to grab it, my other the little finger hole. This is just your little dubbing brush and teaser, you know? So you can use this to sort of um, shape your fibers. Um, you can use it for brush flies and that sort of stuff if you want to get the, the shape nice and sort of correct, you know, the, your side profile. So essentially, if we take one of these little guys, something like that, obviously, I'm pulling out some fibers as I'm doing it, but you get the, the gist of it, you know? Um, you don't want to use it on your sort of uh, synthetics and that because it will grab those. You want to use it on your natural furs and that. Um, so that'll give you nice shaping and that, you know. Uh, it's also great for just general uh, dubbing and that to get rid of the excess. So what you would usually do is you take this, pull it off here. And what you will do is you can pop that back in the bag. You know, you've got your excess dubbing that you can at least use. It doesn't have to go to waste. Okay, so that is the electric orange kit. I think it looks really cool. Um, it's a pretty hefty kit, so you get everything that you can see there. Um, and let me take you through some of the other bits and pieces now as well. Okay, so each one gives a nice little look up bag, like that. The exact same kit, available in really bright yellow. I think that's really cool as well. If you have a tendency of misplacing your tools, then maybe yellow is your thing. And then lastly, we also have a little bit low key. We have the the light sky blue as well which is really pretty um, so if you're looking for something a little bit different to have on your desk rather than maybe the traditional stuff sort of the the colors here i think they present themselves quite nicely so they're all exactly the same these three kits um, so that's the ultimate kit okay let's move over here put these to one side okay so what happens if you don't essentially want all the tools um, we've got these little guys over here which are more, they're more compact, but they're more focused in what they represent. Okay, so with this time, I think let's do it with the blue one. We did the orange one last time, so let's have a look here. So again, comes in some carry case like this. Uh, you've got your cutout foam, as you can see here, and basically you get a few different tools. Um, so I'm not gonna pull them all out again, uh, but I'll show you some of the key differences between them. Obviously, you've got your little gator clip over there or crocodile clip, you've got your dubbing, loop over there with your dubbing tool. Um, you've got your dubbing brush. You've got your one pair of standard scissors. So, oh, sorry, there's your standard scissors. This is actually the arrow point. Um, so what is the difference people will ask? Or maybe you're sort of thinking along those lines, but what is the difference actually? 
Um, when you put them side by side, you might notice something a little bit different. Um, if you have a look over here, this one's got a slight little dent over here, and that one doesn't. So that's your straight point, that's your error point. And what is the difference? Um, the error point actually gives you the advantage to cut wire over there. So if you have a look, um, when you zoom in like that, let me see if I can get the camera to focus quickly, give me a second, sometimes when this stuff's a bit small. Anyway, um, it's actually got a little dent like that and a little dent like that. And what it does is it's not sharp there. It's more like a pair of um, side cutters, you know, it's actually just the action that, that breaks the wire. So you don't want to be cutting wire in that with your little um, scissor blades and that's because they are quite delicate. Um, over time, you might find that you start nicking the blade um, and sort of damaging in that, you know. So that's just one of the tips to consider. Um, if you sort of find that you're tying a lot of yellow flies, uh, yellowfish flies, sorry, um, and patterns that use a lot of heavy wire, um, you want to be using your arrow point scissors or potentially, um, you know, you can even get a pair of cutters. You can also wiggle it enough and break it off, but I find this a little bit quicker. Um, so that's one of the little tips that I can sort of give you. Um, anyway, so this kit, <laughs> this is the little, so this is more like a, t a tires kit. You could say maybe someone who doesn't have all the, who's already got some of the tools, you know. Um, and then again, you've got your bodkin, um, your whip finisher, two pairs of scissors, and this one also has got a little nipper for, let's see if I can get it out of here, there we go. So you've got your little nipper, little rubberized nipper, that's pretty cool. And then it's got your little needle to clean the back, to clean the eye of the hook, you know. Um, it sort of clips onto your zinger, or your fly vest as well, and got the little real fly fishing logo engraved in there. So that's the sort of more compact kit, let's call it. Um, one of the key differences you may sort of notice is between this and the big kit is the actual bobbin itself, the bobbin holder. Um, I'm just going to grab one over here. Um, so the key difference being, let's have a look here, okay. So there's obviously, you can see a bit of a difference, you know, the one's got your brass um, sort of parts to hold the bobbin, whereas this one is more like a, it's basically a plastic. Um, but it's a really hard wearing plastic you know so it's a little bit lighter duty um, it's a little bit different shape um, so you know if you sort of someone who's a really avid tire i would say go for one of these guys because they are a little bit more robust you know um, but there's not much difference between them you know the one's also a little bit bigger and the one's a little bit smaller so you've got more like you call it going towards like a it's not a midge style but going towards let's midge midge size let's say in this application and this is sort of your standard standard large bobbin um, so if you're tying a bigger patterns and that sort of stuff, then something like that might be a little bit better, you know. Um, there's not a big difference, but I just like to sort of show the, the exact differences so that you know what you want to buy. Um, not that you get this kit and you say, but hey, I wanted the one with the brass finishes. Okay, so let's just pop this back in here. Okie dokie, so what do we have in the other kits? So obviously these are light blue. You've got your yellow again, so same setup again, looks pretty cool, nice and electric and bright, and then you've got your orange, which is my personal favorite, um, so there's your orange kit as well. Okay, so what happens now if you've already got some tools and you don't feel like splurging or getting a whole kit like this? Well, you don't have to worry. I've thought of you as well. <laughs> so let's have a look here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with obviously the most common tools that most people go through, which is going to be your bobbin holders. So we've got bobbin holders, um, wood finishes, dubbing brushes, tweezers, bodkins, hackle pliers. Um, we've got over here, you've got your dubbing twisters, your three pairs of scissors, and then these little guys as well, which I'll explain as well. Um, I'll also explain these other scissors over here, and then we'll go through some of the other bits and pieces as well. Okay, so just like in the kit as before, we've got your little um, hackle pliers. So same colors available, you can buy them individually, you don't have to buy a whole kit. Uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, at least you get access to these really cool tools. Um, and everything here is basically steel and aluminium. There's no plastic. Um, so the coating on here, it's a really hard coating. It looks really cool. Uh, so there's those guys. Um, we've got the 
ultimate bobbins as well the ones with the brass finishes uh, so these are the big guys they're pretty cool as well so we've got them in your three colors uh, they'll come in a little plastic sleeve like this as well it's just to protect them from getting scratched um, i don't personally like plastic but it sort of has its uses for this sort of thing just try to reuse the bag um, okay so then obviously you've got your tweezers over here they're pretty cool uh, and then we've got your bodkins you can never have enough bodkins um, your straight point scissors so these are your general dressing scissors and that these are probably one of your most common obviously like we mentioned before if you're cutting a lot of wire get the arrow point uh, arrow point is only in the kits though um, then we've also got dubbing brushes obviously there's those little guys uh, your whip finishes um, so something to look at when you do get a whip finisher is make sure that there's enough of a groove over here to hold your thread and that it lines up quite diagonally like that so to speak so that your thread doesn't flip off the edge or flip off of the edge here you know um, so these little guys obviously they turn as well and it's also got a little sharp bit at the end here so that you can use it to sort of move any glue around or anything like that um, so they're pretty useful um, so same colors as the kits so you don't have to feel left out um, okay there we go and then we've got your um your dubbing loops over here and your crocodile clip or gator clip if you want to call it and it comes with both in the kit um, so you can get your hands on those as well spin them hold them however you fancy okay so the last sort of fly tying tools let's call it that i haven't gone through is those scissors and then these little guys um, so these little guys are just basically magnets um, if your vice is stainless steel, which most vices will have some stainless steel on them, that's actually a little magnet that's on there. And what it's used for is you can pin a feather in place. Let's say you have a long hackle or uh, you have a, a bit of thread or something you want to sort of move out of the way. Uh, basically, you take this little guy, let's take it like this, and it's a little magnet in there. And there we go. They're pretty strong magnets. Um, and that basically then will hook onto let's say the, the shaft of your vice like that with the feather pinched in between it so that you can you can work your magic around it you know um, so it's, it's something that maybe a lot of people haven't thought about or something like that but it's a really useful little tool so these will also be up there and they're in the same colors as the kits um, so yeah i think that pretty much covers everything besides our last goodie over here so what is the difference between this pair of scissors and all the rest so they're pretty unsuspecting from the top, but if you flip them over, you may notice something a little bit different. Um, so these are basically the ultimate pair of scissors that you can get. Let's open up here. So they're a little bit bigger than the normal ones. And they look like that. What they have is they actually have a tension adjustment on them. Um, so you'll see there's this little tiny knob here. It's got a little clicking sound. And that basically adjusts the actual tension of the scissors so you can set them up exactly as you want so obviously if you're cutting really fine patterns you don't want them all loose and flapping around that they sort of you know you're nicking things that you shouldn't need to sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of extra tension that you can sort of hold the scissors like in that sort of position and slowly just you know you just work it like that um that's sort of you know where they used for predominantly um, they obviously have a much longer um, sort of blade as well so they're great for dressing and that but just be careful of wire again you don't want to be trimming wire with your nice scissors um, so these are really good if you're looking at trimming a lot of hairs um, creating a lot of bodies and that sort of stuff especially on like your grunter flies or your largey flies where you want to be sort of making this like the cut foam or you want to be sort of shaping a head like that where you just want to sort of imagine sort of a hairdresser where he's sort of tensioned and then he's basically just thinning your hair around like that you know he doesn't want to be sort of doing that you want to sort of just be moving your scissors around there so those are really cool um, they not available in the kits they only sold individually um, in the three different colors so yeah if you guys are looking for something a little bit different and really into that sort of style of tie plants then definitely these are the the right scissors to consider um, okay lastly we have a couple little gadgets that will make your time on the riverside just a little bit easier um, oh i actually forgot there are some more tools as well sorry okay so obviously hair stackers we've got the hair stackers individually as well um, your blue orange and yellow so they're good to go as well um, in case you missed it the first time how does it work 
So most people will probably figure it out, but sometimes it's nice just to show you a few little tricks. So you've got a little hair stacker like this. You take your fibers with the point down, pop them into there, get a little bang on the table, and essentially hold it like this then. You want to move it from there to there, open it up, and grab your fibers out, put them on your hook, and you're good to go. There you go. So it's got a little magnetic system as well, so it holds them in place. It's not going to be rattling around, you know. Um, so this is actually cost, it's cost steel, or is it cost it? I mean, let me check quickly, where's my little magnet? Okay, it's cost aluminium. There we go. So these are little aluminium tools and they've got our hard bake coating on them as well. So there we go. So that's pretty much everything except for the last big hair stacker. So, if you are tying mega patterns, you need a mega hair stacker. So, what is different about this guy well and what is different actually about hair stackers in general so why do we make them out of aluminium and brass for example and not steel or something like that basically you want to use a metal that does not conduct electricity all that well um, static electricity will cause the fibers to stick together and you don't want that so essentially you want something like an aluminium or a brass where your sort of fibers are staying more separately when they come out um, so yeah this is the big guy he's pretty robust and heavy and that's going to get you sort of those big long fibers that you want to tie with how big is it in comparison it's that big so yeah it's it's a lot different to the other ones um works the same way put your fibers in give it a bang down and then what you do is basically you turn it like this and then you slowly remove it and then all your fibers will be pointing out there uh, because it's got a little bit of a step inside if you can see there so this is solid brass um, it's actually um, a lot heavier than the other ones um, but it's it's really cool if you're sort of looking to tie really big patterns in that um, these are only available single um, they're not part of the kit and um, yep, that's those guys okay then stream side accessories obviously everybody likes a couple of gadgets hanging from the vest not too many though otherwise things get tangled so um the most important tool i would probably say besides a nipper is a good pair of hemostat pliers um so let's have a look at these guys they're a little bit easier to get out the bag so these ones are our standard sort of gold finish um, they've actually got the little bent in so they're pretty cool for getting into hard to reach places and you know like standard hemostats they also have a little locking system at the back like that uh, so they, they're pretty cool uh, very useful nice and lightweight in that um, so it's always a good accessory to have if you're looking for one that's a little bit heavier duty with the side cutter built in um, then you can have a look at these guys as well they have a soft rubber handle same locking system they're just a little bit more robust um, so they'll also be up shortly Let's pop this aside. okay and then lastly we've got a few little bits and pieces some of them might look familiar some of them not but here they are so uh, nippers and hook file and sort of the needle to clean the glue out of your hook you know generally we have a whole lot of tools dangling around in our vest and things make a hell of a noise and get tangled in that so why not include it all into one where you can you know um, so for example this little tool over here these are new little nippers let's see if i can get them out of here so i haven't even had a chance to unpack properly yet i just thought i would come in and show you guys because i'm so excited to go through everything uh, let's see here come on okay this guy the green one is not playing the game here but i want to show you the green one <laughs> there we go okay cool so basically let's move that to one side what have you got here um, some of you may see some parts that are sort of familiar others of you may need just a little bit of help so no stress that's why we're here um, okay, so this is your little nipper, obviously, clicks on, clips onto your zinger. Um, let me see if I can get this thing to focus nicely that you can see what's going on here. Where is my camera focusing? Sorry. Never easy with these things. Um, so that hooks onto your zinger and then onto your vest so you don't lose it. Um, you've got your little needle there, which helps to clear any glue or head cement out of your flies. Um, this is your knot making tool. So um i will put a little bit of a, a link up there or a bit of a video on how to actually use it it's really useful um it's a really cool little tool that i'll show you how to use it exactly um, and then what you've got is also got a little hook file over here so you've got sort of a very coarse file on this side in case you really damage your hook 
and then you've got a much finer file on the side just for honing the point in nicely um, and then obviously you've got your nice little nipper so that's a really handy little tool um, they're really cool to have and I, I do think that everybody's probably want to will want to have one on their vest you know so you've got to hang in there and it's, it's easy to get to um, so we've got this exact one in the green like this um, we've got it in this cool red as well looks quite nice on your vest um, and we've got the yellow as well so nice and bright if you're one of those guys in this place is his tools <laughs> and then we've also got the slightly smaller one this does not have a hook home it's a more simple one these are little basic ones but it's still got your knot tool over there and they're still decent little tools with the eye clean over there same as with the black one um, then we have these little guys over here these little nippers um, these are sort of your standard hydro dip patterns you could call them but they have a nice hardy coating on them so that they don't break and fall apart um, so there they are that's a little rainbow trout one i think it looks really cool it's got a little hole there to fit onto your vest obviously and then you've got your little eye cleaning needle over there so there we go that's pretty much everything um, what we are busy with as well is obviously a lot of you know about the vice um, it is coming along we just had a few little delays and a few issues i did send them back just to correct a few little things that i picked up so they are coming i know they've been taking a long time but we're getting there um, so if you have been waiting i just wait for a little bit more patience and you'll very very soon get your hands on one of them uh, the tools were supposed to launch alongside the vices but i'm just too excited so i had to show everybody so yeah, if you're thinking of getting into fly tying or you're thinking of upgrading your kit or maybe you've got a birthday, Christmas, anything like that coming up, maybe pop one of these on your list. They're really cool. So I've already moved all my stuff over to that. Anyway, thanks so much, guys. If you have any questions, um, feel free to comment, drop us a message, uh, an email. We'll just hop onto the website, check it out. They'll be up, like I said, sort of over the weekend and into early next week. And yeah, happy time. Enjoy.